which leaves one. We're down to the top. There's one. only one. The legendary tier. Yeah. Legendary. That's that's already at this point. Yes, we are. Yeah. You know who it is. The man, the myth, the legend. It's official, right? I mean, yeah, it's it's the first thing I wrote in my notes here. Number one quarterback, Chris Sims top forty, right? It's second year in a row, and it seems like it's been a lot of years out of a lot of years. It's Patrick Mahomes once again. That's right. Patty Mahomes, number fifteen. He is the man, the myth, the legend, and that's the first thing I wrote in my notes when I turned on the film. We've officially hit legendary status. Forget right now what we're talking about. It doesn't matter. This is one of the greatest we've ever seen to play the position. One of the greatest. Manning, Brady, Mahomes, right? I mean, it's, it's that class. Elway, it, Joe Montana, Mahomes is there, right? Special room of the Hall of Fame. Get it ready. He's there. 15 That is the man. Nobody, nobody has more of an aura about them in the NFL right now than Patrick Mahomes. When you want to talk about his own team's belief and what they can do because he's their quarterback, and, I mean, the fact of coaches reside to if we're in a close game and he's got to last, like, ugh. I mean, ugh. I mean, that's what I hear all year. Well, they're just – they'll keep it close and then – they got him, and then they'll, you know, gosh, uh, that's what I hear all year from Givens. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, it's just, yeah, we can, we can, we can contain them, but you know, they're gonna get the ball late, and uh, you know, you just uh, hopefully we can win. <laughs> I mean, that's what he's doing to people right now. That's what he's doing. When you when you hear defensive coaches who, oh, it's on a Tuesday, and. Man, we just got the first look at Mahomes, and they showed me a tape of all his great plays. And oh my gosh, I don't know how you stop it. Do we blitz him? Is it worth it? Do we drop everybody? I don't know, right? I mean, that's what he is. You go, did you just get off the treadmill? And they go, no, we got Patrick Mahomes this week. Like, <laughs> yes, Come on, I'm trying to figure this right, out. Right, right. I mean, you know, his team believes in him, and if a game's close. The other team believes in him, too. That's where we've gotten. They're literally like, ha, oh, the game's close. Damn it, he's going to win it. All right? I mean, I don't think anybody believes right now that they can beat him in a one-and-done scenario. I mean, just, I mean, again, I'm just waxing poetically here right now. Forget mm -hmm. notes and football and all that. I mean, that, that's the first thing. He's gotten to a status where it's like, oh, it's the playoffs. Home, road, don't matter. He's coming, and I don't know if we can beat him. And I think when you add on top of that, that, you know, he plays his best football in the biggest moments, period. I mean, we got one throw in Cincinnati or he lost the AFC championship game. Okay, I know. I mean, again, you know, they were up 21-3. Their defense was allowed to stop people. I checked the rule book, right? I mean, the Super Bowl, he was with one foot and throwing balls off the ground, flying through the air. Tyree Kill dropped two touchdown passes. Somebody else dropped a touchdown pass. I mean, they didn't lose that game because of Mahomes. I mean, we know that, right? I mean, he's, he's, he's incredible. And where he's gone to a next level is – I mean, we know quarterback play, and he wasn't perfect this year, as we know, and we'll get into that in a minute. He's mastered winning. That's what he's mastered. I feel like he got to a point in his career where he's like, F stats, it doesn't really matter. Everybody knows I can put up stats. I've already there and done that. I'm just going to figure out a way to lead my team and win this game today. And he's kind of, if the game's got to be ugly or whatever, right? Super Bowl was ugly for really – Three quarters, mm -hmm. right? Just hang in there, hang in there. I'll crack the code. I'll crack the code. Boom, I've cracked it. Oh, no, we're unstoppable now. And we're just going up and down the field on you, right? That, that's where he's, incre he's incredible that way. Ultimate field general. When you watch him on film right now, and if you went back three years ago, what he's doing at the line, checking things, doing all that, yelling at people, getting him in the huddle, yelling at the coaches, telling him to go hurry up. It's, he's gone to another level. There's nobody in football like him right now. It's Brady-ish that way, the things I just explained there. It is, right? That, that's where it's, it's amazing. Um, I, I think we, we, we are just gonna, we're just going to win, right? That's, that's, he doesn't care what this looks like. And maybe the greatest blend we've ever seen on system technician and backyard magical worker, right? That's where he can go 
five series in a row where you can go, what? Well, he's a machine. Like it's like, ooh, it's perfect. It's like, is he Joe Burrow today? He's got great mechanics. Every throw is good. He's in the pocket. Blah 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 blah. All of a sudden, the game turns around. All of a sudden, oh, it's a drive or two. We stall. Ooh, they've caught up to what we're doing. They've changed what they're doing. And then he just takes over with physical ability all of a sudden. And he's running around the pocket and he's, oh, hey, wait, hey, call an RPO. I'll throw it between my knees and through your legs. And it's just, it's incredible. I mean, it's incredible. And then we talked about Stafford and the throws in the pocket. I mean, this guy, when you go back, we don't even, we don't, we don't give him the credit he deserves. I mean, really, I, we probably talk about him too much. Most of America thinks we probably do. I, I, there is a few throws in every game where he's in the pocket and he's running or moving and he makes a throw and you just go, I don't know how he saw it. I don't know how he threw it like that. And that's unbelievable. And if, you, if I saw it for the first time, I'd go, that's lucky. But, but it's, I've been sitting here for an hour and it's the 87th time I've seen it. And it's just like, it's incredible. It's six cents that way. His arm is not as powerful as Allen, but of course it's powerful, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's really powerful. His touch is out of this world good. Like we talked about with Stafford and that fade balls, right? Back out of the backfield, leading a, a running back up the sideline on a little wheel route or whatever, and just making a really catchable soft ball for them. He's amazing at it. He's amazing at it, yeah. let alone it's more arm angles and things than we've ever seen from anybody in the history of football. I was worried, you know, because you've shown your love for C.J. Stroud here lately <laughs> and, and some of the other quarterbacks and Matthew Stafford here on this podcast. But your love of Patrick Mahomes has not waned any, and it has grown throughout the years. Uh, I mean, I don't think a whole lot of people are going to disagree with what you said there, but to your point of he's maybe even better than we are even giving him credit for, and we're giving him a lot of credit for being very good. Mike Florio put it well when he said his floor basically is losing in the AFC championship game in right, overtime. Right. That's the floor to a Patrick Mahomes team. Right. Let's let's compare because you've brought up the name Tom Brady a couple times. Let's compare the first six seasons of Tom Brady versus the first six seasons of Patrick Mahomes. We have that there. So Patrick has won two more games. Well done. He's got three more playoff wins. He's got one more conference title and they got the same number of Super Bowl rings. Wow. And 17 less interceptions and almost 100 more touchdowns. Maybe the most striking of all the numbers. And they were riding him from day one. They weren't going, we're going to play defense and run the ball and do all that. To me, there's no question that I'm more impressed with Mahomes. And again, Brady's the man. And you know, I mean, I thought Brady was a mythical god at this point of his career anyways, the same way. But this is one-upped it just because of like the way they did it. They were basically like, hey, you're our starting quarterback? Hey, you could break the NFL record and throw 50 touchdowns your first year and win an MVP in 5,000, and we're just going to ride you. I mean, that's rare. That doesn't happen. Like, And then they just ride them to every damn Super Bowl ever since except for one? I mean, it's incredible. I mean, it, it really is. It's, it's just like he's – that's where, to me, it's a little different, and I don't know if he'll ever catch Brady, but this dynasty was orchestrated – around him period Brady got grown into it and there's nothing wrong with that I'm not but I'm just saying there's a difference in my opinion and of course with what with the way they're doing it and of course it was an offensive system that we had never seen before because of him they were like like we've you, we've, we've made fun of it we've loved it we've done it all right but it's just like hey you guys all run that way and this guy go that way and he'll figure it out don't worry he'll make the damnedest throws you've ever seen don't worry we'll be good you three run that way that guy go that way and the defense will be in trouble right? I mean they, they were doing stuff and it's all because of him yeah I mean that's where it's incredible right I mean, you know, the, 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 he's doing it, too, with a style and a flair that I think is, like, unmatched in history. He's got right? both. He's got, the, he's got the art and he's got the results Ex right? to show for I it. I mean, he's just – I mean, he's got a little, like, Jordan had the fade away with the tongue wagon or the Jumpman logo, like Mahomes' sidearm or Mahomes with the last throw in the game against the 49ers where he's on the run, he throws it, and he kind of – stops in his tracks right as he throws it and then goes backwards like to me that's kind of like his mm -hmm. pose his move right he almost has a body image where you go 
That's Mahomes. Well, and, and he's rare. Do, and he's doing it all with the dad bod, as we saw again this off season. <laughs> yes. He was recently on the Pat McAfee show talking right. about there. He said, uh, "quote I thought we got the whole dad bod thing out of the way last season. I guess people still haven't realized that I don't have abs, so I'll continue to work on that. And hopefully, one of these days, we can figure out how to get a looser T-shirt." So I thought <laughs> yeah. I, he yeah. put that. He yeah, put yeah. that. He, well. was, he seemed like he was a little annoyed by the last one because yeah. he was also like, "I had a backpack on. It was pulling my shirt and all that." <laughs> uh, so, so here's the deal. And, yeah. and last. Last year, yeah. he finished seventh in the MVP. There were one, two, three, four quarterbacks ahead of him last year. And that's like that's like a bad year for Mahomes. Like yeah. you were seventh in the MVP. What happened? Right. And statistically for him, it was a down year. And yeah. to refresh people on this exercise, this is not like who's the greatest of all time. We're not, not who's the next Tom Brady. It's who would you rather have next year? And despite the numbers last year, of course you want to have Mahomes above any other quarterback last year. But let's get into it though. Because he had twenty seven touchdowns last year, which was low. His fewest since 2019. He had 14 interceptions, his most of his career. So anything there that you look at and be like, "Ooh, that, I, I, ooh, that wasn't that wasn't great." That does concern me a little bit if this I, continues going forward. I hear, I hear you. I mean, there, there's it, it was not his best year. It was not. It was his best when it needed to be its best, though. Yeah. It was special. I mean, again, like we talked about at the time, kind of rare. I've never seen that in NFL history where a team goes. I'm going to kind of play B minus, and the quarterback's going to play kind of A minus football the whole year, and then get to the important part of the year and go. Here comes the A plus stuff. No problem, guys. We'll just turn it on, and they did it. It, it matters not what we say about the Chiefs at all this year. Like it, this whole year, if they're playing crappy in the regular season, we're like, well, yeah, they can't just turn no, it on. No, the they're playoffs. one of those well, teams that, yeah, they're, 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 the I will not be able to say that. And you know, I was saying that at the end of the year last year. I was yeah. like, oh, this is, I, you, they can't just turn it on. That yeah. doesn't happen. But to your point, some of his worst games were against the worst competition. It, it, yes, he can be. Comp he can get. I don't. What do I want to say? Complacent, bored, right? Where. Some of his worst games, again, I think he gets a little frustrated. Like we talked about with Josh Allen or some of these other guys here where it's like, wait, it was three and out. It was three and out. I got to make something happen now. And now it's like, well, okay, but don't leave the confines of the offense. Don't get too aggressive now. We don't need to force that throw. Or, you know, I know nothing's happened, but, you know, stay within the offense to a degree here. Don't leave it all the way. There's some guys underneath. They're open. They're open. You could have kept moving the ball here. But you got, he's got a little impatient, and he has a little bit of that, hey, he wants to be Mr. Magic Man, do that. I know that. He tells me that. He loves that. So I think when he goes a little long time without making one of those plays, he's kind of like, it's time for me to make one of those plays, especially if it's a day where their offense is struggling and can't find the groove. I think he takes that burden on himself to kind of jump things and get going, jump yeah. start things and get going. And it can lead to issues. It can lead it, – it gets him off kilter, what it does. It leads him to not going through through reads completely or looking at one and now wait guys haven't been open I'm going to look at the rush and try to scramble and buy some time somewhere and make it happen that way and you're like no oh, that was four or five plays ago there there guys open right now you're kind of missing it your your, your internal clock's been messed up mm -hmm. that's where he can definitely get better and then he can be a little sloppy with the mechanics at times too Right, his best games. I can always tell he's got these. His feet are real wide, and he's perfect. And other games when he can be a little off, like yeah, his he, his feet get close together, his stride becomes a little odd, and the ball might not be as crisp or, or you know, you know, as accurate as we know he can be. Uh, but yeah, I think that's the thing. And to what I said, I was trying to get to this point, and you know, I got tequila and weed in my brain, so I'm trying to excite, decide, get through all that from the weekend. Yeah. But we also, before the show, you and I were talking, right? I mean, they're this close. When you go back and watch them, I mean, they're this close from being 13 and 4. Like, this close. I mean, they catch the ball against Detroit. And they catch the ball against Green Bay. They catch the ball against Philadelphia. Like, they're going to win the game. Like, they're going to win. I mean, period. 14 and 3 then. I mean, right. Yeah. They could, So that's how close it was. And again, of course, we know they didn't help him out a whole lot this year. You know, they didn't on the offensive side of the ball. They had a hard time. Receiver, who jumped out, who's going to be the mainstay guy, you know, who they can. I think that was all. So, like, that's what's scary about them. Their defense was awesome. It was a year where it looked like they took a step back offensively to kind of retool, and they still won the Super Bowl. Yeah. Right? And that's, that's what's crazy. And I think they're more talented at receiver this year than they were last year. So, 
And I would think that they're going to – this is that rare where they're going to go back and go, we won the Super Bowl, but they're going to watch film during OTAs of last year's stuff and go, damn, that was stupid. Damn, we were shitty. What the f-? They're almost going to be a little motivated coming off a of Super Bowl going, that wasn't our best ball last year. We could be better. I think we have some video of Patrick Mahomes this offseason too. He has talked about some changes that they might make. He said Coach Reed's been preaching all season, we're going to get back to throwing the deep ball. That's what we're going to do. I have, I have to be smart when we do that, but at the same time, I want to be that explosive offense that we have seen in the past. So he's going behind yes, the back sir. here. Yeah, We're going to see that. We That'll know. happen at some point. This is Hollywood Brown deep. Oh, they're going deep. So mm-hmm. they Patrick Mahomes is not afraid if every team knows it. We're going deep this they, year again. They need to. They need to. You know, it's funny. A few years ago, I was going, they need to find more of an intermediate short passing game. Remember that? I was going, they don't. It's always looking for the big pass. Can they have some surgicality in their offense? They've honestly gone the other way too far, right? And I would tell you that really as a whole through the year and the last two years, if you told me the the worst throw in Mahomes' arsenal right now, it's the deep ball. If you consistently look at it, because I think they kind of got out of the groove of it. And it became a little bit more of like, yeah, the 5, the 10, the 12, and all that. And we know he's one of the greatest deep ball throwers in the game, right? I mean, he, he's, he's arguably the most gifted thrower ever in the history of football. I mean, he's, he's in that conversation. I mean, we've never seen anybody be able to do it all the different ways he can do it. I mean, some of the – he's – so he's arguably the most gifted thrower. Here's one that's not arguable. He is the greatest scrambler in the history of football. If you take Mahomes' scramble highlights, I will put them up there against anybody right now who wants to come see me with a video, and we'll see who's are better. Because it's just, you can't even come up with the top 10, right? I mean, we laugh during the season. Sunday night football, we're going to do a game, and they want us to pick the five best throws of the year, and we laugh. We go, can you believe? We're not even going to talk about these ones. We have to leave these out. <laughs> like, which one of these five crazy throws do we have to pick, right? I mean, he's an incredible scrambler. Sixth sense. Great in the pocket, but the scrambling to throw is out of this world good, right? Yes, he can make all the power throws. I do think it's somewhere we can get better, though, is the power down the field throws. Okay. I think there is a little bit of room there. Um and, you know, like I said before, the most movement wow throws in the pocket in NFL history. In NFL history already. Like I'm, ta- like I'm talking about, like, you know, again, like I was talking about Stafford. Like, he's running up the line of scrimmage at full speed. Why looking downfield? I might run. Oh, Kelsey's open on a 27-yard corner route. Boop, and I'm just going to throw it and not really break stride or gather my body or anything. And you just go, what? He has a throw in the Bears game. He throws a deep corner to the right. They're backed up in their own end, like in their own part of the field. I mean, it's a 45 yard throw. He's on a full sprint running up in the pocket, about to get hit. And he's just like, and you're like, what? Was there a magnet in the guy's yeah. like pants there to, to bring the ball to him? I so mean, it's incredible. He doesn't have the abs. You wouldn't look at his body and be like, that's a strong dude. But he has he has maybe the perfect combination of flexibility and yes, strength, right. right? It's like both of those things in the same, in the perfect amount that joined together to make him able to do some of those things that some other quarterbacks who are stronger yeah. or ha- are more physically gifted in some areas That fine line do. of you want a little armor, but you want to keep a less elasticity, Yeah, right? Like I just watched, I was watching a little, like my son last night was watching something on YouTube with Kevin Hart and CJ Stroud. You know that thing where like Kevin Hart gets in the cold tubs and talks to athletes or yeah. famous people, right? Yeah. He had CJ Stroud. And I'm get, I, CJ was probably awesome in that. Well, he, he, and CJ, <laughs> but my, my son was like, C.J. Stroud's not that muscular. He's kind of just like, you know, and, oh. I, and I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah. A lot of quarterbacks are like that, you know. And not, you know, I, I don't remember us talking about one great quarterback ever and go, man, look at his pecs. Ooh, can he bench a lot? I mean, you've, you've said it's a negative for some quarterbacks. Uh, you, Will Levis last year yes, coming I, out. Yeah, there, there's a time where up. it can make you too rocked up, too tight. And you can lose elasticity as an athlete in your arm. All of that. you got to find that fine line. Like we talk about with Joe Burrow. You know, he's got to find that fine line of like, right. okay, I got a little extra structure, but it's not affecting me overall as an app. Yo, 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 what's up? Thanks for watching, homies. You know it's the off season, but there's no off season with Chris Sims on button. Where it's the NFL, it goes all year around. All right, so hit subscribe, please, to hear my thoughts on your favorite team, your favorite quarterback, and hey, how this season might unfold as we get ready for the 2024 season. We got a better picture, clearer look now. Now that the draft is over, free 
agency. We know who's playing quarterback for certain teams. So, again, thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe. Peace out, homies. Check you out soon.